there's no doubt that as an actor, I quite often used to think, like, what use am I to the world? We flew in last night and uh, we got in after midnight. We've just driven out of Kathmandu and uh, we're driving another three or four hours to uh, where Dr. Ruit and his team have set up a camp, our camp. I definitely over the years have sort of matched myself up in my head against people who are really trying to do good things for the world and I think there's, there's just something about being involved with Fred Hollows that allows me to go, all right, I'm doing something useful or helpful. Hey, how are you? Good to this see you. Dr. Schumann, no, Dr. Schumann. chairman of the ICE. My name is Alison, nice to meet you. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. Fred Hollows was a very famous Australian eye surgeon and he believed that everyone had the right to good eyesight, no matter where they lived. And so he dedicated himself to finding better ways to deliver eye services, and particularly cataract surgery, to people right around the world. Tip your head back. No, it didn't. Fred passed away in 1993 and he formed the Fred Hollows Foundation in 1992, not long before he died. Are you assessing people in here? Joel's one of our global ambassadors and what that basically means is that he helps us to raise awareness of the Fred Hollows Foundation. He visits our work and is really happy to talk about the work that we do. And will he have a surgery tomorrow just with one eye or will... No, we'll do the both eye today after. Oh, so both today? Wow. I've been involved with Fred Hollows Foundation now for 10 years. Very mature cataract. I've had three trips to Nepal. What's her name? Kumari Sarki. Sarki. Sarki, Kumari Sarki. Sarki means it is, in Nepal, it is so-called untouchable group. Most of this uh, group, they have not any access and most of them are underprivileged. So she's from that group, from mm. that village. There you go. She's, she, she's got, here you go, I'll take her here. Joel's someone who's always happy to just roll up his sleeves, pitch in and really help people, uh, you know, take an old lady by the hand and lead her out of the surgery to the waiting area uh, and talk to the families and really interact. What's the machine that he's holding for? It is used to calculate the lens power. Uh-huh. So they set up an eye camp at an old school or a community hall. Maybe she's got better blood pressure than me. I bet you it's better than mine. Yes, we do. <laughs> Fred Hollows will announce they're doing an eye camp in a particular region outside of Kathmandu and people from the community will come down if they think they need an assessment. 120 by 80. Perfect, better than mine, I Perfect. swear. Yeah. <laughs> I'll generally come in like a, like a good actor, you know, once, once everybody's done all the hard work. <laughs> How do you pronounce her name? Kachi? Kanji. Kachi. Kanji Maya. Kachi. Yes. My name's Joel. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> when people come into these eye camps, often they've been unable to see for a really long time. It could have been five years since they last had sight. Amazing. They have surgery usually the same day that they've had their eyes checked. And then the next morning, the patches are taken off and they can see again. What is she most excited about being able to see again? <laughs> She said, you have to dance with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But she said, I have not the skill to dance. Don't worry, she's definitely a better dancer than I would be. <laughs> Tell her she doesn't have to dance with me. She doesn't have to. My grandmother, a lot of these ladies just remind me of her. <laughs> so I thought it sounded like she's saying she'd rather wrestle me or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother, when she was, was old, kind of looked like a lot of these Nepalese women, like really, really beautiful, wrinkly skin, her, ha her hands. But that's why I love that old Bill Withers song, Grandma's Hands. And then she, she will have the great pleasure of seeing my face tomorrow. <laughs> When Joel first visited the Foundation's work, it was a real connection that he had both with the patients and being able to see again, but also with people like Dr. Ruit. Hey man, why like, was he getting slower? What's going on? <laughs> how are you? Good. How was it? You got a bit of beer? Oh yeah, look how great it is. Yeah. 
Fred Hollows uh, came to Nepal in uh, 1985. I was working at the eye hospital as a young ophthalmologist. Fred Hollows inspired people like me to be able to uh, bring in, uh, you know, high quality eye care and uh, take it to the community level. One of the things that made cataract surgery unaffordable for people in developing countries was the cost of the tiny intraocular lenses that are used when you have the cataract removed. And so Fred and Ruit thought that the best way to do that would be to set up a factory in Nepal where they could be produced for a much lower cost. And so the cost of those lenses came down from about $150 to about $5. Cutting the edge of the coin. So that's the incision there. So you can go in and then break up the cataract. Cataracts aren't necessarily, they're not painful. You see the edge of it? Huge. It's just the impediment it has on life. Anybody want this? Anybody? I actually really don't know what to do with it now. <laughs> The changes that can be made is not just about one person being able to see. This is the lens. So after the cataract is gone, you just put a lens in there. It's the lenses that they produce at Tilgungu. You know, you've got one or two family members who aren't able to perform their own work duties and live out their own lives because they spend a large part of their time ushering a parent around. Blindness especially with cataract, shortens the lifespan. And also, there's a subsistence uh, family structure. And one person gets knocked off, changes the rhythm of the family, and changes the whole economy of the family. Every case that I do changes life. This is one of the places where the people who were uh, given surgery today are resting before they get their patches taken off and are assessed tomorrow. So I guess they're excited, but a little bit nervous too. <laughs> Dr. Brewitt performed, I think they did about 85 surgeries yesterday. This morning, all of the people who'd been operated on yesterday are waiting to have their patches taken off. It's kind of one of the most exciting parts of the process. <laughs> Dr. Ruitt, he gets a lot of joy out of it. I think everybody does, particularly the patients do. Oh, you said you would dance with me. Oh, look. This is, that's almost break dancing. I see Joel as a great friend. We need some music. Bless you. He, uh, at this level of his career, uh, he also likes to do like I want to do, to make changes in people's life. And he wants to do that uh, as much as he can. Dr. Roy, I want to know how her, her back's doing. The back is good. This good. Is. But uh, the other thing is uh, the little ticklish that he gets from old lady who has been operated, you know. And uh, I'm sure that's uh, very addictive. So the words he's using is the world uh, looks very new and bright and beautiful. I think these are the exact words. Okay, here we go, here we go. We went to a high school. I think they'd had a bit of a sense that this is a guy from Hollywood and they were really excited because of the fact he was from Hollywood, but they were probably more excited to meet Dr. Oit. Good. All right, cool. He's at almost godlike status in the work that he's done because he's restored sight to more than 120,000 people. And so when he turns up with Joel, he's the superstar and Joel's the bloke from Australia who comes along, along the way. Part of the reason that I love Nepal so much is because I met Dr. Ruit on my first trip 
and he is one of the greatest people that I've ever had the chance to spend time with. As an actor, it's, it's, ve it's a very selfish life. People take an interest in, in actors, but to me, the great people are people who are helping other people. You guys are always going to be the future. So don't mess it up. <laughs>